Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Jonathan, and welcome back to Money Talks, where we want to offer you financial information and meet you where you are financially so that you're able to stick to your budget, manage to pay off your debt, and begin to save on your path to building wealth. Today, guys, I want to talk about what it's like to be in your mid-30s in what's called that messy middle. If this is your first time joining me here on the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So, in that sandwich generation, meaning you have older parents that may depend on you financially in some sort of fashion, and you also have kids that you have to supply resources to to grow. It's important that you understand that every decision that you're making financially is impactful to your financial future. You can't just simply focus on one huge thing without considering the other facets. You can't buy a home and not consider what this and put a lot of money down and not consider what that does to your retirement plan. You can't fully invest in your retirement plan and not consider the fact that you may need to buy a home, you may, may need to buy a car, you might have kids coming up uh, to go to school, or you might have kids that may need braces or in sports, or maybe even have a parent that might have to go into a long-term care facility. These are all things that come up, whether it's those specific things that I mentioned or other nuanced things about life that that parent or their child or yourself may need. And it's so important that you understand that you have to prioritize effectively because when you make the right decision in this what's called the messy middle, the same sandwich generation, it will allow you to hit all the other facets. That means if I threw all my money in the house, but I don't have any cash to buy the car, or I don't have any cash, or I'm behind on my retirement, well, that means I'm going to have to exclude something. But if I have an equal balance approach to these things, and I consider the fact that, yeah, most people typically do something different with their home in every, about five years. Average person moves about seven times in their lifetime. It's important that you understand that though these statistics may seem far-fetched, Fetch. There are a lot more. There's a lot more truth to the numbers than you may think, or that it may appear. And it's more important that you understand that where you live now likely won't be where you live in the future. So it's good that you want to invest that money into a house, and it's good that you want to get that house paid off. And you would have an asset in that case, but you also want to think about, okay, I'm. I need to make sure my retirement is healthy. That's priority number one. When you start this financial journey, your very first financial goal from a long-term perspective is getting the retirement healthy. Now that may make a little lopsided sense. So can I back up for just a second? When you decide to get serious about your money, first thing you need to do is write a budget. You're writing a plan. You have short-term plan, long-term plan. You have goals. You have things you're, you're wanting to hit. And usually those goals are a little bit more immediate. Second, when you write your budget, the first financial pocket goal is you need to have some money set aside. That means you need to have some cash available for emergencies, for purchases, for um, things that may come up. When you start to think for your long-term future, your first goal is your actual retirement. Retirement, then house, then after that, kids cop. Why? Because if you get to, if you pay for your kids' college, you paid off your home, but you get to retirement and you don't have no money, how are you going to survive on what's average of Social Security, $1,300 a month? So you do your retirement first because that gives you the money that if you need to buy a home or if you have kids in college, you'll have the money not only for retirement, but you'll have the money to help them as well. Second, you do those things after you get cash in an emergency fund. But understand this, your emergency fund over your lifetime, yeah, you aggressively go after the six months, but you need to progressively be building that emergency fund periodically throughout your year because your life and your lifestyle changes. It actually grows and it does become more challenging. But ultimately, you are going to get that emergency fund to about two to three years worth of experiences. You do that because that helps protect you 
when you start living off your investments of the stock market and perhaps something like a COVID, something like a market correction, something where you it's not best or advantageous for you to pull money out of the account will occur in the stock market. So you won't be able to, it will not be best for you to pull money out. And if you're not able to pull money out and that's your source of income that you're living off of, then again, you have to have cash in your account. But again, that may not be in your books you're talking about. That may not be in your in the videos that you listen to. But it's really a natural part of life and how you build your finances and how you have to think about building your finances because the worst thing that happens to people is they find out <clears throat> what decision they need to make when it's time to make the decision. And finances, the more you can be proactive about a lot of this information and activity, the better off you'll be. It's important that you understand how you need to build your wealth and how to be inclusive. And that's why I encourage you, please get a financial coach. Please get a financial advisor. Please get an accountant. Get through these people in your space that's going to help you and guide you along the way to make you aware of the decisions that you need to be thinking about so that your present isn't interrupted. And the good thing about when you do things right with your decisions, with your money, when you do that, <coughs> that helps the long haul, meaning if your life is getting better financially, your kid's life is going to get better financially, your parents' life, whoever you're supporting, their life is going to be better just by default because you're supporting them. So I wouldn't be so much concerned about can I put a, put a child to school with cash or, um, man, I haven't bought that new car. First, secure your retirement. Focus on your retirement. Then start to look at your home. You do have to buy a place to stay, but don't buy a place to stay that you're, that takes away from you being your ability to be able to number one save in the month, but then also enjoy your life. See the thing about as you progress through life, when you get from your twenties, life progressively throws more decisions at you, and. As you live in this United States, you find a lot of things cost. And it's important that you understand that you're going to need money. You're going to need more money the older you get. So the best thing you can do is start to prepare for it. I don't want you to be severely saving so aggressively that you don't enjoy your life. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying if it's needed to get one year, maybe two years, to get real, real intense, just to get yourself on track. And then you have to reassess. So if you're just getting out of debt or if you are in that debt-free journey, understand when you think about your next goal, you know how to severely go into that next goal. That's true. You have to, when you're trying to get out of debt, you I mean, you cut things to the bare bone. But that's not a normal life to lead. The normal thing to do or what you need to prepare to do is life after you get out of debt because you're not going to live like you're getting out of debt normally. Your money may be the same, but your lifestyle is now going to pick up and you have to now set a comfortable lifestyle that allows you to save, allows you to enjoy some things and allows you to continue to progress your money forward. That way, then if you want to aggressively go off your goal and not sacrifice your saving and not sacrifice your lifestyle, well, that points you to one area of your finances, your income. And so it's important that you think about all these things and think about the total picture when you're making these big changes and what are you doing. You have to set your lifestyle. You have to look at the huge picture. You have to consider when you buy a home, where are you at on retirement, what money you're putting down. It's not that, again, putting cash down for it, but then also you have to ask yourself when you buy a home, how long am I going to be here? If you're not going to be in the home at least three years, it really is going to make 
little sense for you to buy the home because it's not your home. This is an investment. And no matter how you look at it, you can personalize it all you want, but it's still an investment. And you have to assess that investment and impact of the emotion. You may feel good. But you're not going to feel good if you have to sell that home and leave and you have to sell at a loss. It could be a lot of money left on the table that, quite frankly, many can't afford to hit. So I would encourage you during this time, really think about how you can really take a step back. Breathe in what's needed. Look at your total picture. Get support. Understand that you're not in this alone, but this is how you be successful with your money. What you don't know, you learn and you get wisdom with. I myself still have a financial advisor. I myself, I have somebody that does taxes. But the good thing about it is I understand everything they're talking about. So I know what's going on. You need to get clear and you need to get understanding on what's needed for you next. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you like it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.